from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Hello. How are you guys? Let's see. So here we go. By way of introduction, I'm going to tell you five things that people call me. They call me Amy. They call me a writer. They call me a filmmaker. They call me mom. But if I'm in the other room, they call me mom. And the last thing they call me is short. And here's the thing. I love words. And that's pretty much why I'm here. Because I love words. And I'm going to tell you a few things what I mean by that. And then we're going to read a story. So I'm trying to cover all the ages here. We're going to do some stuff for the little ones, the big ones, and in between. But let's just start with some cool things about words. Beginning with the alphabet. Did you guys know that the alphabet is really friendly? And do you know how I know? What does a friendly person say when they're walking down the hall? Hi. And the alphabet is always saying hi. That's how we know the English alphabet is super friendly. I like also the sounds of words. How do we say that? And if I said, if I wanted you to scream it, what would you do? Sunday. I scream Sunday. I scream Sunday. And what does that sound like? Sunday. Right? Ice cream Sunday. Ice cream Sunday. I think that's interesting. Um, I like the way words look. What's that? Okay. Yep. Okay. Does it look like something besides just the word okay? What if you tilt your head to the side? What does it look like? It looks like a little person. It looks like a little guy. And that observation many years ago led to one of my very first children's book, children's books called The OK Book, about a little guy who looks just like that. And he goes around trying all kinds of things. He's not really excellent at anything yet. He's just, but that's all right, because he's having fun figuring out what he loves to do in life. And it just started with that observation that the word OK looks like a little guy. All right, lastly, one more example. Palindromes. You guys know what a palindrome is? Mom, Dad, Bob, Ava. The thing about those words, they're the same exact forwards and backwards, right? A palindrome is a word or a phrase that works the same in either direction. But this is for you bigger kids. The thing about palindromes that's especially awesome is when you can do a whole sentence that works that way. So this little guy here, he's thinking, too bad I hid a boot. Now look closely at those words and read it backwards. What does it say? Too bad I hid a boot. It's the same either way. So those are a few examples about words. Secondly, I love ideas. And I'm going to show you a few things that I mean by that that have nothing to do with books, OK? And then we're going to combine the two, words and ideas, and that leads to making books. But first, a few ideas. That is, for real, a subway station in Berlin, Germany. That's someone's house. Is that awesome or what? That's in someone's backyard. Look closely at the cup. 
When you pour the milk into the cup, it makes a picture of a what? Of a cat, because cats like to drink milk. Bookshelves. And here's my favorite one of all. That's a library. The St. Louis Library. Is that unbelievable? All right. So now we got loving words, loving ideas, put them together, and you got books. Let's do a few. We're going to start with my newest book, which is called Wombers. And to explain that idea, we're going to do a quick one-minute video. Here we go. <laughs> That's what you wonder. It's a book. It's a game. It's, it's words created with numbers. Would you like some honey to sweeten your tea? Yes, that would be wonderful. <laughs> She's learning a two on the tuba. Two! <laughs> <laughs> Wombers, written by Amy Krauss Rosenthal, illustrated by Tom Lichtenhall, creators of the New York Times bestseller, Duck Rabbit, available now from Chronicle of Books. Toodles, later alligator. <laughs> all right, so you all have the basics now, right? And basics, in Wumber language, we would spell it B-A-6. There you go. And let's do a few together. So the boy on the left is saying, don't you just love making forts? And she says, I like tents too. He lost his first tooth. He is elated. Very happy. Forgive me for this is belated, but it seems once again I have over inflated. And see the boy going up? The penguins are saying, when you mate forever, it tends to be a formal affair. And the kids are saying, I'm looking forward to a big piece of cake. He pinched my belly button, and the dad says, I think you'll, sir, survive. They just do this for attention. And I threw this one in. This is how the book started. That's just a rough little sketch I did. And then Tom makes it look amazing. And the last one, pure contentment. So that's a bit about Wumbers. And I'm going to make an offer for you guys. At some point today, before you go to bed, with the help of your mom or dad or a big friend, if you text me a Wumber sentence to that number, I'm going to pick one and send you a signed copy. So that's the number. Text, give it your best. Text a Wumber sentence, and I'll let you know tomorrow who wins. All right. Duck Rabbit. I need everybody's help for this, OK? We're going to divide right down the middle. And everyone on this side, you guys are going to read everything on the left side of the page. And everyone over here, you guys are going to read everything on the right side of the page, OK? You'll get this really quickly. What's going on with those clouds? Exactly, they look like ducks and rabbits. 
All right, now here we go. Left side, ready? Hey, look. Everybody sees if you look at it one way versus the other direction, it's a quack, quack. Sniff, sniff. Now the duck is wading through the swamp. No, the rabbit is hiding in the grass. There, see, it's flying. Flying, no. Up top here. The duck is so hot, he's getting a drink. No, the rabbit is so hot, he's cooling off his ears. Here, look at the duck through my binoculars. Sorry, still a rabbit. Here, ducky, ducky. Here, you cute little rabbit. Oh, great. You scared him away. I didn't scare him away. You scared him away. You know, maybe you were right. Maybe it was a rabbit. Thing is, now I'm actually thinking it was a duck. Well, anyway, now what do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? Hey, look, an anteater. That's not an anteater. That's a brachiosaurus. That is duck rabbit. So it's just a quick, it's a quick uh, PS. I thought I would, this is especially relevant to say here in DC. Um, sometime after the book came out, I realized something kind of interesting, duck rabbit. Can you think of another ongoing de national debate that maybe starts with those two same letters? Two perspectives, looking at the same thing. I don't know. All right, moving on. Let's do one more game and then I'm gonna read a story, okay? So this one is called This Plus That and you'll get it right away. One plus one equals us, giving you a couple examples. Yes plus no equals maybe. All the colors equals the rainbow. All right, here we go. Let's see if you can figure these out. Small plus bottle equals baby. Tall plus coffee equals thrown up. Dark plus popcorn equals movie. movie. Cozy plus the smell of pancakes minus an alarm clock equals weekends. Good days plus bad days equals exactly. And once upon a time plus happily ever after equals you guys are awesome. <laughs> All right, I think I have one more from this book. Somersaults plus somersaults plus somersaults equals? Wishes plus frosting equals? Yes. All right. 
Anybody here have a birthday? Right here? How old are you? Today? All right, so here's my offer. And if there's somebody else with a birthday between the ages of 4 and 14, if you see me afterwards, I will call you tonight or in the next few days and read you a bedtime story on the phone. Okay? Happy birthday. All right, so we're going to do one more story. And this is called Spoon. And it's the story of a... This is Spoon. This is Spoon's family. You see the, fork, the spork on the end? I think there's one in every family. <laughs> on Sundays, Spoon goes to visit his Aunt Silver. He has to be on his best behavior there. She's very fancy and proper. And she says, goodbye, darling, ta-ta. At bedtime, Spoon very much likes to hear this story about his adventurous great-grandmother who fell in love with a dish and ran off to a distant land. Some of you get that. Oh. Lately, though, Spoon had been feeling blue. What's wrong, asked his mother. You look a bit bent out of shape. Oh, nothing, mumbled Spoon. Does nothing ever mean nothing? It's just that, I don't know, all my friends have it so much better than me. Like Knife, he is so lucky. He gets to cut, he gets to spread. I never get to cut or spread. As mom says, yes, Knife is pretty spiffy that way, isn't he? And Fork, Fork is so lucky. She gets to go practically everywhere. I bet she never goes stir crazy like I do. And mom says, Fork does get out and make herself useful, doesn't she? There's Fork going at it. And Chopsticks, they are so lucky. Everyone thinks they're really cool and exotic. No one thinks I'm cool or exotic. And as mom says, those chopsticks are something else, aren't they? Meanwhile, if only Spoon knew what his friends were saying at that very minute. Spoon is so lucky, said Knife. He's so fun and easygoing. Everyone's so serious with me. No one's ever allowed to be silly with me like they are with Spoon. Spoon is so lucky, said Fork. He gets to measure stuff. No one ever does that with me. Spoon is so lucky, said Chopsticks. He can go places by himself. We could never function apart. That night, after bedtime stories, Spoon's mom turned off the light, tucked him in, and said, You know, Spoon... I wonder if you realize just how lucky you are. Your friends will never know the joy of diving head first into a bowl of ice cream. They'll never know what it feels like to clink against the side of a cereal bowl. And they'll never be able to twirl around in a mug or relax in a hot cup of tea. Spoon hadn't thought of it that way before. He lay awake in bed for a long time. His mind was racing. He felt so alive. There was only one thing to do. So he got out of bed, and he said, I can't sleep. And his dad said, come, Snuggle. And his mom said, come, Spoon. And so he did. And Spoon had very sweet dreams. So 
That's Spoon. Um, we're about out of time, so I'm going to ask you. Um, oh, that, these are a couple of my other books. Little P. Plant a Kiss. My little girl that plants a kiss literally in the ground, and something magical comes from it. Um, this is a video. I do a lot of videos. I wanted to mention this one because when you're the library, of, this is about the Library of Congress, obviously. This is a game that you can play at your local library or your school library, taking the two truths and a lie. And a little twist, two truths and a library, hiding notes in library books. You'll find this on YouTube. Uh, that's my grown-up book, Encyclopedia of an Ordinary Life. Thank you. All right, so kids, we can end this one of four ways. You can, we can end it with grumpily ever after. All right, that's choice one. Chocolatey ever after. Itchily ever after, or happily ever after? Which one? All right, let's go back to chocolatey. One, two. So I wish you all a chocolatey ever after day, and thank you so much. Bye. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.